Hello, everyone. Welcome to Transform Now. I'm Brad Hairston. Today, my guest is Peter Fords. He is the Group Chief Digital Officer for National University Health System, otherwise known as NUHS, which is one of the major public health care clusters in Singapore. And he's also an SSNC Blue Prism client. Today, Peter is going to share his thoughts on automation in the healthcare sector and just talk about all the things he's learned over the last several years of leading the program there at NUHS. Peter, welcome. Nice to have you. Why don't you share a little bit more about yourself before we get going? Thank you, Brad. Great to be here today. Um, so I'm currently Chief Digital Officer here at uh, NUHS in Singapore. Uh, me and my team in Group Digital Office, we focus on automation as one of our big areas, of course. Uh, we also work on uh, telehealth, on our patient-facing mobile application, um, and we're uh, starting to uh, look into work in uh, omni-channel for communications as well. Uh, my background is in uh, consulting and technology-enabled change. I've been doing that for the last 20 years, uh, coming from a background uh, in uh, Boston Consulting Group and IBM, uh, working across a variety of industries and now focusing, of course, on healthcare. I did see that you're a former consultant, uh, like I am, and I wanted to ask you about that. How did, how did your years in consulting prepare you uh, for the, the role that you're in right now with NUHS? Yeah, consulting has been a, a great background to have because you get exposed to a variety of different projects, uh, lots of different challenges, lots of different organizations, and uh, of course, project work. Um, and what we're doing here in uh, NUHS and with Group Digital Office is, is project work, uh, implementing new technologies, scaling those new technologies across the organization and working on, on getting adoption. So of course, it's always a combination of uh, work on people and the changes that they need to make to their ways of working, work on the processes, um, so getting those technologies uh, into the processes, um, and also, of course, on uh, the technology itself. But the technology itself tends to be uh, the, the smaller part. It's the people in the process work, which uh, requires more effort often. Yeah, very, very true. I mean, at the at the heart of automation is process excellence, right? So I do I do think having a consulting background like you have makes a makes a huge difference. Well, Peter, let's um, let's dive in. I want to ask you as we begin just to provide more information on National University Health System. Many people listening to this podcast may not be familiar with uh, your organization, so give us give us a little background on it, if you would. So the National University Health System uh, is a public healthcare system here in Singapore. Uh, we're also an integrated academic and regional health system. We have three acute hospitals, National University Hospital, Lutong Fong General Hospital and Alexandra Hospital. We've got one community hospital um, and we run seven polyclinics, which are large primary care clinics. Uh, we also are affiliated with the National University of Singapore and the medical schools there, so the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine, the Saw Sui Hock School of Public Health, and the dental faculty. Uh, we have around 18,000 staff. Uh, we run around 2,600 beds, and we train uh, 6,000 students at any one point in time. Interesting. Okay, that's helpful. It's a pretty big and, and multifaceted organization, uh, for sure. Lots of different pieces and parts to it. Well, let's talk about automation and just kind of how that came into existence at NUHS. So if you could take us back to the beginning of the program and just talk about what were the drivers that, that uh, you know, created that need for automation? Um, how was it sponsored? You know, what kind of provided the basis to invest in this area and, and really get it going? And then and then from there, just explain kind of how it's evolved over time to, to the current day. That would be great. We started our automation journey back in 2019. 
And the work was actually started even before I joined. Uh, it was kicked off by our group chief financial officer uh, mm -hmm. who had the, the foresight to go into automation. Um, and through that work, together with our IT partner, uh, Synapse, which is the health tech agency here in Singapore, uh, the group CFO started to automate processes, including claims adjustment, um, and, uh, insurance, uh, tagging. So these were really large processes, uh, in the financial space. Uh, and it started with a combination of not just the automation, but really starting from the perspective of, you know, let's harmonize the processes first. Mm -hmm. And once the processes are harmonized, uh, we can in doing so, of course, also simplify the processes at the same time and then add on the automation, uh, so that, um, things can be done with less uh, human effort. So there were are, are around five large processes which were automated uh, over the course of a couple of years. And then in 2021, we decided to take automation further and expand it into other areas of the business. So what we did was we, we set up uh, a dedicated team on that with some dedicated resources. So we put in place uh, dedicated team members again working with our IT partner Synapse, um, uh, dedicated NUHS people also, of course. And then we uh, put in place uh, a senior steering committee uh, made up mm -hmm. of uh, the, the group chief financial officer again, myself, uh, the group CIO, and uh, uh, the assistant chief executive from Synapse. Um, so we then, uh, of course, went out uh, and started talking with different areas of the organization, uh, really aiming to take automation into uh, operational processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing that we did was because uh, we as uh, a cluster run an annual budgeting process, uh, what we had found previously was that sometimes the challenge is uh, someone will have an idea for a process now Mm -hmm. but they have to wait on the next budget cycle before they can apply for the funds. So in order to mitigate that, what we did was we set up a central budget pool, uh, which mm -hmm. was held centrally and managed by a uh, group digital office and IT. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if an institution, one of our hospitals, for example, had an automation idea, a process that they want to, wanted to get started with, they can just draw down from that central budget pool um, and can get started straight away. So this combination of having dedicated resources um, and having the budget pool really helped accelerate things and get things started quickly. That's great. And, and it's really interesting too, to hear that the CFO was the, was the initial sponsor. I, I recently read an article that uh, was in the U.S. based on um, a survey given to a bunch of CFOs. Uh, it's one conducted by Duke University that they do every year. And the most recent one, 60% uh, of the CFOs who responded said that they're leading automation and, and also AI uh, efforts at their respective companies. So um, that uh, really resonates to hear that you, you were led by a CFO initially. And Peter, as you talked about uh, you know, just the way that it, it continued to build and catch on and, and then expand into different areas. What were some of the things you did to, to help kind of build adoption and get other areas excited about automation? Because it had to be a brand new concept to many of them, you know, that maybe they'd heard of it or they, they had had experience in other places, but at NUHS, this was uh, something very new and, and, you know, kind of innovative. Um, so how did you, how did you build that, that momentum as you went? Yeah. So the, the first thing is that, um, as you mentioned, people are not always aware. Um, and even if they're aware, they may not fully understand, uh, what automation is and how it can help. Um, and often there's a, um, a, a misunderstanding that, uh, when we talk about automation, uh, we're talking about uh, physical robots or machines, and then we're talking about software, of course. So what we did was we went out to different departments uh, within the different institutions, and we meet with them. We share with them a presentation, of course, on uh, automation, 
Uh, we share examples, crucially, of, of where it's helped. Uh, we show them uh, a video uh, of the automation running so that they can mm -hmm. understand that uh, the digital worker is working through uh, the existing software applications. Uh, and we share with them the typical use cases where it can be helpful. So if there's a process uh, which is running in a system where a user is clicking through lots of different steps at the moment, then that's a, a good candidate. If there's a, a process which is running across two different systems, there's not integration in place, that's a good candidate. Um, and we share with them, of course, that uh, if it's uh, stepwise, if it's rules-based, minimal exceptions and so on, really? those sorts of things uh, work. And then uh, whenever we can, we'll get someone from uh, a previous process uh, uh, who has benefited from this to come in and tell their story because that, that's the most powerful thing of all. If someone has gone through the, um, gone through the learnings themselves, uh, seen the benefits, uh, then they're always the best ones to tell the story and uh, share what they got out of it. Mm. What I hear you saying is you're removing the mystery around yes. automation and you're making it more tangible, more understandable. Um, those are those are great um, ideas and and ways to really get people comfortable with it and and to consider how it could impact what they're doing and their job. So that's really neat. So Peter. Uh, Maybe you could pick a couple of examples of um, of use cases that that your team automated that were really really impactful at NUHS. Can you share a couple of those with us? Sure. So uh, the first one that I'd like to share is medication home delivery. Uh, so when we were in the height of the pandemic in COVID nineteen, we were uh, delivering medications uh, to home in order to help patients so that they didn't have to uh, spend too long in our physical facilities. Um, mm -hmm. And that led to very high volume. So just in one of our pharmacies, in one of our institutions, we were processing around 200 deliveries a day. And, and all of those deliveries, of course, they have to be dispensed and they also have to be billed in the system. Uh, and this billing in the system was taking around seven minutes per item. Uh, mm -hmm. Now through automation, we managed to reduce that down to um, down to uh, three minutes per item, uh, which was quite a big saving. Uh, mm -hmm. So that saved around 400 man hours a month. And through this automation, the, the most important thing of all was uh, before automation, we had a, a, a team of pharmacists actually sitting, doing overtime, uh, doing this billing. Uh, as well as, of course, dropping the medications into packaging and uh, sending them off to be delivered. Um, and they, they, uh, they were, were tired from having to do all of these long, long hours. So the, the great benefit there was that uh, we saw that uh, save them time um, and they were able to go home to their families in the evening instead of having to process all of these different medications. Yeah, we always pharmacists doing billing activities, but we want them filling prescriptions. Uh, that's the real. That's really what we need. Yes, yes, exactly. And 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 in fact, you know, uh, some of the feedback that we got from them was that with this automation in place, they were able to spend more time also engaging with patients, which is what they want to be doing. They want to be talking to patients, explaining to them about their medications, um, and and helping out with the treatment. That's great. And uh, tell us another use case, if you would. Yeah, so the second example uh, is consignment consumables tracking. Um, so this is an example uh, for our operating theater, where we were able to automate uh, notifications to vendors for these materials, uh, to process the invoices, uh, and to improve visibility of the PO status. Uh, so in this area, the number of invoices was around 1,500 per month. Uh, and this process, uh, which is now automated, saves around 7, 750 uh, man hours per month. So uh, this is another example where there was a lot of uh, manual work going on to physically track uh, all of these different materials uh, to process the invoices in the system. And with automation, we were able to take that away from uh, a human, free them up uh, to 
uh, focus on other tasks. Um, and so it's a great benefit. Mm, that's great. Those are, those are both fantastic examples. Um, it's funny too, how many examples you hear from the pandemic era, you know, the pandemic kind of got us all thinking a little bit, um, a little bit more, uh, in a little bit more innovative manner and automation certainly benefited from that in a lot of ways. So you talked earlier about how you've expanded from what began in finance into other areas. Talk about other areas you're hoping to expand into, uh, maybe that haven't really been touched by automation yet. Do you have a, do you have a punch list that you're uh, working, working off of, if you will? Yeah, so the, the first thing is that um, this process of uh, engagement and, and gathering of use cases um, and candidate processes, it never stops. Uh, there needs to be continual engagement. And so uh, another of the things that we do there is that we partner with other initiatives uh, in the organization. So we partner with our process simplification initiative, uh, mm -hmm. which has top-down goals uh, for our institution leadership. We partner with our employee uh, simplification scheme, uh, which is called Gross, Get Rid of Stupid Stuff. Uh, so mm -hmm. their employees can make suggestions um, and we aim to automate some of those things which the employees uh, uh, suggest. Um, we also partner with our innovation office and we ran mm -hmm. a large event with them in one of our auditoriums recently uh, so that people can understand that automation is also an innovation. Uh, and so the new areas that we're looking to go into in the future is, is first to explore the clinical space. So we have one use case, which is running at the moment where uh, we aim to automate the process of uh, entering lab results into one of our systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, a second area, which we're exploring together with our uh, chief technology officer is the combination of automation and generative AI, large language models. So for example, picking up uh, the output from an LLM and loading that into a system uh, or feeding uh, some uh, documentation into the LLM and taking a summarization or extracting uh, structured text, for example. Example. So these are uh, exciting areas for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say that from our company's vantage point in talking with customers, um, healthcare and, and also life sciences are, are two industries where we've seen a, a very large amount of interest and, and also POCs and pilots and what have you with Gen AI combined with, with digital workers um, because of the information intensity that you have in this sector and the large amounts of documentation that are just constantly building and building, you know, all the time. So, um, well, that's exciting. Um, let's talk about how you measure success. I've heard you talk about a few times, you know, we saved X number of hours here and X number of hours here. Um, you know, are there other metrics or, or key performance indicators or whatever you want to call them that you use to gauge whether an automation is delivering the value that you expected? Yeah. Uh, so the first thing we track is the, the number of processes, which we're automating uh, mm -hmm. and we report on that, uh, regularly. We also uh, keep track of all of those different use cases so that we can share those across the organization. What's good in one institution can often be transferred into another. Uh -huh. uh, and then, as you mentioned, we track uh, the man hours uh, uh, or uh, FTE cost avoidance. Uh, so uh -huh. those are, are the typical things that we will uh, look at. Um, and of course, we also do uh, a regular report back to our executive group so that they can see uh, the progress that we're making um, mm -hmm. and the savings which are coming out. And then again, uh, also there, I also like to share the use cases so that uh, they too can, uh, can pick up on these things and uh, take them back into their organizations. Right, right. And I'm, I'm assuming your leadership also is curious about how each of these things is impacting patient care because ultimately that's that's the goal, right? Um, and, and we see that in the private sector with with uh, companies using automation and AI to try to make the customer experience better. And but that's what I love about healthcare is ultimately 
patient care is what it's all about. So um, have you all had to articulate that in, as a part of telling these stories and, and kind of communicating how they're, um, you know, generating financial benefits as well as other types of more intangible benefits? Yeah, so a couple of examples there where we've impacted patient care are, again, going back to the pandemic, uh, we had, we were running uh, testing facilities uh, and we had a very large number of tests. Uh, and many of those uh, patients were new patients uh, who did not have a record uh, in the, the system. So uh, what we did was we uh, automated patient case creation uh, into the ERP system. Uh, and uh, also uh, at the same time, the insurer tagging. Uh, so this reduced the time that was required manually for each step uh, from two minutes down to around uh, 30 seconds. So that was a big thieving. Um, and also helped uh, th that same team, of course, who were doing the testing to focus on on the patient and focus on the, the testing for the patient. Another particularly interesting example recently is that uh, nursing have automated the process of uh, inventory checking for their emergency cart. Uh, so this is a process that used to be run uh, once every two months by a nurse physically going and looking through the various items in the emergency cart and checking that they have expiration dates, which are, are far out, you know, beyond three months. So this was only done once every two months um, or uh, if they had had to resuscitate a, a patient. Um, so now with uh, automation in place, uh, that process uh, doesn't need to be done by the nurse physically. Um, uh -huh. It can also be done much more frequently. So the, the cart's actually getting checked every one week uh, through the automated process. And of course, that then frees up that nurse to be spending time caring for patients rather than uh, doing this inventory management activity. Mm. Great examples of how the patient wins, you know, in, at the end of the day from, from all these automations. That's great. Peter, what advice would you give to other healthcare organizations, regardless of where they are on the globe, um, that, that, are, that are looking to step into the automation waters and start to leverage this technology. How would you advise them just based on your own experience there in UHS? I would say, for, first of all, just get started. Um, finance is a great place to start. Uh, operations and materials management, we've also found to be a, a good place to start. Um, Look for those uh, opportunities where people are spending a lot of time processing in the system uh, or where there are those integration gaps between systems. Um, do your engagement with the business. Um, and as you explained earlier, you know, demystify it for the business uh, mm -hmm. and make that engagement a continual process. Uh, if you can build a, a backlog uh, of use cases, then that's a great position to be in. Uh, and then from there, our experience has been try to make it simple for the business. So by putting in place the dedicated resources, the dedicated pool of budget, um, then that helps simplify things for them so that they know who to go to. They know that there's budget there, there's someone who can help them and can navigate them through the process of automation and also the IT um, processes behind this too. I love the, you know, the, the idea of, of keeping, keeping connections with those groups that you've done automations for and, and not, it's not a one and done. You're, you're, you're maintaining that dialogue because there's always going to be more stuff that you can automate in their world over time, especially with the way technology is innovating and you know you're going to have the ability to do new things for them that you couldn't do a year ago or two years ago so um, but that that's something that many programs uh struggle with they they forget about or they they break the connection with the business and the program continues but without that healthy pipeline of new stuff um it, over time it, it really diminishes what they can do so I applaud your, uh, your efforts there. Um, well, let's talk about um, just where things go from here. As, as you look forward over the next few years, um, you've mentioned AI is one thing that your team is 
really starting to explore, but what, what else do you envision will start to come into play uh, for your program going forward? So looking forward, I see the work continuing. Um, I see that, uh, that process of engagement needs to continue. And on that engagement, you know, I'd also like to include that, uh, um, others, others going into automation. It's my lights going out. You can edit it up. No problem. Um, others going into automation should also engage with their, with their partner. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, their, their automation partner can provide them with a lot of use cases, um, mm -hmm. can provide them with that experience that others have gone through. Um, and, and those use cases are, again, are particularly helpful when, when talking to the business. So, so going forwards, uh, we'll be exploring the, the clinical areas. We'll be exploring, uh, integration with generative AI. Um, and we'll also be looking at how automation can, uh, stitch together the already existing technologies in the IT portfolio. Um, so I see automation really as helping in, in two ways. You know, one is, um, one is of course, you know, removing unnecessary, uh, human effort, uh, and freeing mm -hmm. those up from repetitive tasks so that they can spend more time in patient care. Um, and then the, the second way is in, um, providing glue between different, uh, IT systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, congratulations on all of your success to date. It's, uh, it's very impressive and I think the future is is very, very bright for NUHS, especially with you at the helm and with the, the team you have working with you. So um, thank you so much for coming on the program. By the way, I'm going to use that G-R-O-S-S -S, uh, acronym. That's, that's a great name for a, a, an effort to get rid of stupid stuff. Is that what it was? Get rid of yeah. stupid stuff? Yeah. Um, haven't heard that before, so thank you for that. Uh, but thanks for thanks for being on and I wish you the very best. Thank you.